Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 4 in the Minecraft plugin tutorial series. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you what are permissions. We're going to be diving deep into the crash course and then... Ah, uh, actually, PowerPoint crashed. Okay guys, welcome everybody. Take two of the... Per Take three guys, welcome to the permissions video. Here's what we're going to be covering for God's sake. So I'm going to be showing you how to use lock perms. This is a plugin that I do recommend if you are a newbie, if you are a beginner when it comes to permissions, I'll simply give you a quick crash course into it. Then I'm going to explain how permissions work, how you can use two places. Number one being plugin file. And if you are coming from the earlier episode, which you should, then you know how to use that file for commands. Well, today I'm going to show you this I'm going to show you how to make the same file also for permissions in three modes, not just one. Then I'm going to show you how to use a bucket, how to use the code to check for permission. And then finally, this is something that most YouTube tutorials don't cover. This is how to add and remove permissions using the player dot add attachment. So uh, my PowerPoint does not like me today. I, I do have to admit, please guys check the blog post in the video description for the source codes, as well as all the links given throughout this video because we can go in more depth and if you want to go into the full depth we actually have a course it's called project orient which is a full seven week deep dive into java coding which is really nice if you haven't made a single line of code before and also minecraft plugins specifically how to build anti-cheats mini games how to go into nms how to build, build custom entities and even these permissions systems settings timers basically basically everything that we're covering in this tutorial section times too because i'm on there twice per week giving you guys customized help on something called live calls plus there's seven weeks of pre-recorded content so if that is interested to you please head over to mineacademy.org slash project dash orion also check the link in the description for uh the same link i guess and there's also a blog post to this video here is some useful links. First of all, I'm going to introduce you to a plugin called Lockperms, which I recommend that you install in one of the first videos in this chapter. And if you visit lockperms.net, you go to getting started, you can actually learn about permissions. And this, this guide is intended for people who have never used a permission plugin before. So guys, if you are beginners, uh, please spend some time studying this because it does not make sense for me to make, you know, 45 minute video, basically just stealing <laughs> what already has been written here, because this description here is very lovely, right? Quick, quick crash course permissions are basically just strings. And they can look like, say, uh, a bucket, where is a, an example? Well, here's here's Essentials plugin, and here's a list of permissions that they have. So Essentials.back, Essentials.back.onDev, right? And here's the description of the permission. So permissions essentially are just the strings. Okay, and if you install LockPerms, and if you are a beginner, I do recommend you change the mode in which Lockperm stores these permissions so that you can easily access them. So if you install it, first time you, you will start it, they should, the plugin should generate a file called Lockperms. And if you open up that file inside the config, you're going to see the storage method. I do recommend using the YAML dash combined method. That one is the easiest one. Of course, it does not support any databases or crazy things but especially if you are a beginner it'll help you learn because then what what is going to happen yaml storage is going to appear right here in which you're going to have a bunch of files and you can simply open them such as opening the groups file and then you're going to see a list of permissions for each group i've already added this permission here so i can just probably just delete the content of this file and you'll see what happens when we start the server so okay so this file has been regenerated and now i can go into lp stands for lock perms this is the main command and then i can simply use the tab completion feature which is beautiful lp dot group and then the default group because we don't have any other uh, you can basically read how to add more groups in which you can store a list of permissions and then then you can assign these groups to different players one can be vip the other one can be sponsor you know you, you guys probably are familiar with these terms already so i don't have to cover them so basically lp space group space default space and then i think it's called permission set and here you can basically do whatever you want so our plugin is called cow canoon.command.cow and then you simply specify if the permission is true if you're giving the permission or you're taking away the permission so we're giving the permission good and now if i reload the file it is right here 
Okay, this is lovely. You can also edit this file. Just make sure to do LP reload config when you're done. So it loads. I do also think that sometimes it registers that you've edited the file. And if I save it, yeah, it says detected change in group files reloading. So that one happens to work for me, maybe 80, 90% of the time. If it doesn't, then just use the reload config command. Good. So this is basically crash course into lock berms. Uh, again, I don't want to make 50 minute video if everything has been laid out so beautifully. And I have to give credits to these people. They spend a lot of time writing these documents. So please make sure to check them out. Now, how do we go about actually registering permissions. So first of all, you have the, the lovely file called plugin.yaml. And this file has been here since the episode two. If you haven't followed this tutorial and you want to know the very start, please go to episode one, two and work yourself through it because I'm building on to the same code base in every, every video in this tutorial is just building on to the previous one. So likewise, we have a command section. We're going to, we're going to put in a permission section. And this is a link to paper MC, which I have on my screen right here plugin ammo tutorial this is the same link as i mentioned in the previous video by the way in, if you go into my website if you click on the blog post you're going to have all these links available too so you can likewise specify not only commands but also permissions that your plugin uses this is useful for plugins that use permissions to restrict access to certain features so let me just copy this and we can start changing. By the way, please note that they have a mistake right here. The, the space right here should not be. All right, here's a permission note. So this could be anything, cow, canoon, dot command, dot cow. This is the description of the permission. You don't have to have that if you don't want to. And then the default right here is basically the three modes that I've spoken to. So by default, this is OP. If you are an operator, you have that permission. You can also change this to true. That means everybody has that permission. Okay. And then in lock perms, if you want to take away that permission from a specific group, you go and you set the permission to false for that specific group, right? Which is interesting. It reverses the logic, which is really handy. Or you can set the default value to false. That means even if I give myself the operator status, I'm not going to have that permission unless I go into lock perms and I set my permission to true explicitly. Okay. The children here basically contain another uh, another permissions list oops cow canoon command cow baby for example and then the, the true basically means that each permission node has children and when you set the true this permission node will then inherit the parent permission it's a bit confusing i personally never use this system that's why I, I you know struggle to explain that sorry about this guys but honestly if you use lock perms you don't have to worry about that children thing at all i personally never use that because in lock perms you can simply inherit permissions from different groups so if you have like an admin group it can actually inherit all the permissions from the default group right and again the, the tutorial i just going to say i'm not going to cover this because you have the official docs on how to, to do that on that website good so that's that that's how to add these permissions in our code let me just uh let me just do that instead right here we can just leave each other uh leave us with that one and th the value can be false just so to demonstrate for you guys what it does and then you can also use bucket that player has permission inside your code so if we specify another permission say cow canoon cow dot use then we're going to go into the entity listener and don't worry guys i've added this code right here okay behind the scenes so I'm, I'm going to explain what it does don't worry about this guys so in the last video you practically only should have this one and then here we can also check for if the player has uh, permission if the player does not have the permission node then we're going to just return and then we can simply send the message to the player you don't have a permission to milk cows and then we can do some you know some some nice emoji or this is not even an emoji whatever that is so we can do that if i reload the server obviously should work as expected i don't bother to give you a demo because you can just compile it yourself but what i want to do before we finish this video is actually talk about what people have always requested it is how to give and how to add permissions without using a permissions plugin in the game this is really handy especially if your plugin gives permissions on certain words worlds certain commands or certain mini games right so i've seen that being used a lot and the way it works is you can create something called you can call something you can do something called player that add attachment 
So let me just do a quick demo. Player dot add attachment. And we're going to be going with this one. So this will basically add a new permission. The permission attachment basically means permission with a single permission by name and value. It takes in a plugin. In the last video, I explained how to get the plugin instance. So we can just place it right there. Then we can place the name of the permission. And this, this is literally the same as you have right here. And then the value of it can be either true or false. This is the same as for lock perms. And also, if you are adventurous, they also support the ticks. So the amount of ticks to automatically remove the attachment after. So say that I want to remove the attachment after one second, I'll just going to put 20 ticks. If I want to delete it after a minute, then I'll just multiply it by 60. And if I want to delete it after an hour, I'll just multiply it by 60 again. Obviously, uh, you guys know that, you know, 20 takes equals one second, and then there's 3,600 um, seconds in one hour, if I'm not mistaken, okay? So you can do cool stuff like that. Now, please note that this one returns permission attachment, this method. So you can literally just save it somewhere in the hash map, and I've created a hash map storing unique ID. Guys, if you're doing this, please don't store the player object. It's just going to eat your memory. You don't have to do that. But I do recommend you store the unique ID of the object, of the player, and then whatever it has returned, right? And then you simply call it permissions list or whatever, and you can create a new hash map. If you are a beginner in Java, basically this is a di dictionary storing keys, being player IDs with their new permissions, okay? And then you can check if the player has already been given that permission, then you can delete or remove the attachment. And this one is a bit tricky because it doesn't take the string. We can't put this one. It doesn't go. I wish, but it doesn't go, unfortunately, because Bucket wanted Bucket wanted to protect, I guess, the the scope of different plugins because each permission attachment is is tied up to a single plugin. So you almost have to. Uh, you don't have <laughs> Bucket does not want to give you rights to delete permissions from other plugins, right? So that's why they are protecting themselves. That's just my assumption, uh, conspiracy theory, right? So. Uh, that's why we're essentially just putting um, the attachment right here. And if you guys can see it, let me just rewrite this into more readability. There we go. Now you can see it. So we're creating the attachment, then we're storing that as a variable, and then we're, we're putting it by the player unique ID and we're putting the attachment inside the, the dictionary. And then if the player already has that, we're just going to delete it. And this one is also, um, yeah, so you have to basically understand it in, in Java, if you call the delete method, it's called remove, this will remove the mapping from the dictionary if it's present, which we know that it is because we check it for, for right here. And it also returns it back to you removes and returns back. So we can actually use it right here. And again, if that's not clear, we can just, uh, yeah, we can just edit the code to be beginner friendly because I know some 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 people are going to be a bit confused so yeah this is even better good essentially this is just going to give you a nice switch and I can do something like I don't know funky demo test so you know uh, you'll notice the, the switch and up here we can get the effective permissions for for the player itself and this actually returns something called attachment info which is strange but bucket is you know sometimes funky too so apparently that one has the attachment within itself and then one has the permission itself, which is supposed to be that one or, you know, funky dot demo dot test. And then from, I'm also interested in knowing which plugin has that permission. And yeah, and we can actually get the plugin instance uh, by, by calling get plugin. So here you can actually delete attachments from, you know, another plugins. And so the conspiracy theory has been diminished. Um, good. So you, you'll just see, this is just a debug. You'll see what happens in the console, uh, when we're clicking, you know, any entity basically, because here, this will only work for cows, but this will work for any entity. This is a very nice debug. Let me compile and let me show you what this will do. Okay, guys. So I'm playing with this and my cow actually disappeared. Oh, right there. So if I keep right clicking the cow, it's just going to toggle between giving me the artificial permission right here, the funky demo test. And as you can see here, it will simply start printing these uh, permissions that are already in the plugin. So cow canoon command cow from default. And I guess the default right here means that we haven't really given the permission uh, from the code 
right? So we haven't given the permission from the code, but it's been it's been returned from, I guess, this file right here. Same goes for the other one, test.demo. And then group.default comes from lockperms. And then funky.demo.test also comes from default. Okay, guys, I don't know why, why Bucket does this, but apparently we're not able to get the plugin, even though we just placed it right here somewhere. Because we can say that before, I've also added these two debug lines. So before we have toggled, the permission, it was in the map, you can see right here, and this is what it was inside the dictionary. So this is the player's unique ID equals, and this is the permission attachment, which is actually coming from Lockperms because Lockperms takes over um, the permissions system. Bucket does not have a, a default permissions manager. So that's why Lockperms takes over this. And then after, since we already have it, it said you no longer have the permission, right? So this code was executed and then thereafter, there is no there is no special permission if i just right click the cow again there we go now we can see that the cow the funky permission is gone so now only these three are printed out good so that's that's one thing that i want to show you also if you go to plugin yaml we've actually set the command cow to false so if i go and i delete this from the file hopefully it's going to reload yeah that's right so now it should not work. If I type in cow, it should actually says unknown command, even though we know that the command is there, but it for some reason does not give us the no permission message, but it just says unknown command. And even if I have operator, it's just not gonna work. So we have to give each other, give ourselves that permission. Now it's being reloaded. And now I can type in cow command, there we go. And now the actual command is working. Awesome. So that's how it works. I do apologize. I have to maybe add some SQL to this video for why there is no, you don't have permission message. Uh, maybe there's just something that I've changed internally in the server, whatever. So that's one thing because that one is false. If that would be an OP, then we would automatically have that as operators and likewise, likewise not have that when not operators. That's the other thing that I want to show you. Yeah, so I guess guys, this is it for this video. I've also did not demonstrate this thing, cow canoon, cow use, right? So if I have a bucket and if I, if I want to spawn a cow, it says you don't have permission to milk cows as well as the other message. So now it just ignore the other message, right? But now if I have to, if I give myself the cow canoon dot cow dot use permission, there we go. Hopefully it reloaded properly. Yep. Now, there we go it exploded properly. Awesome. So hopefully that explains a lot for today. Sorry for the length of this video. Did not expect it to be that long, but I just wanted to give you guys the full picture of permissions and yeah, take care.